talk to the prof, talk to the TA, talk to the up ears, talk to anybody who sees it differently so that I can learn to see the same wonder in the material that the prof does. Today we have Professor Jason Foster, one of the instructors for Praxis 1 and 2, also known as ESC 101 and ESC 102. So tell me a little bit about yourself. So as you've already heard, I'm Jason Foster. Uh, my degree, I've got two, from Systems Design Engineering at University of Waterloo. And I'm guessing that a number of you were thinking of going to University of Waterloo. So. Uh, so what I've been doing ever since that undergrad degree where I was working for IBM and a bunch of smaller software shops, I went back to, to university to pick up a master's degree and rather than go on to a PhD, I decided the thing I wanted to do was actually start teaching. And so I joined ENSI about 15 years ago and I've been teaching Praxis ever since. So my role at the university, I'm what's called a teaching stream instructor. So my, my primary responsibility, role and passion is to teach. The research I do, which there is some, uh, is all about supporting teaching. And the area that I'm really interested in is how do you take the really amazing small scale design and teaching activities and have them work on a class of 200 to 300 students. So with that as, as the start, what available support do you have for students in Praxis 1 and 2? Well, the biggest thing about Praxis 1 and 2 is that we lay out a set of ideas and a set of principles and ask students to say, how can I apply these to, to my interests and to my world? So the biggest support we have for, for students in, in Praxis are the other people in Praxis. So it's really a team sport, both explicitly when you're working in a team, and more in general, every time you're just in the classroom, it's talking to each other, it's bouncing ideas off each other. Now we also, all of our TAs, um, we try to hire upper year or graduated ENSI students so that they know what you've been through and they've also been through Praxis. So a great resource is, is actually to take the time to talk to a TA, not just in studio. So there'll be lectures and there'll be what we call studios that are kind of really active tutorials and there'll be TAs in both. But our TAs want to work with you and they want to actually talk to you and help you out. So if you see them in the hallway, ask them a question. Email them, uh, they'll be pretty responsive. Trying, you know, phone calls are probably a little bit tricky because you know they, they tend to keep their cell phones to themselves. But just have fun engaging with all those around you. And there's upper year students too. But one thing to keep in mind is that Praxis is always evolving. So one of the things we pride ourselves on, because we teach design, we have to do design. So every year we go back, we talk to the students who just went through the course, we talk to people outside the university, inside the university, and we change the course up. So what your practice experience will be, will be similar to the second, third, and fourth years, but it will be different as well. And so ask them for support, ask them for advice, but also acknowledge that the course will have changed a little bit. Favorite memory from teaching the course? I, I'm going to you know, do one of those things called reframing where I say, well, rather than talk about a, a specific memory, what, what is sort of my favorite experience in the course? And, and that's when a student asks me a question and I'm like, I had never thought of this topic that way. So the, the great thing about the course, because as students, you're trying to develop your own understanding of the material that works for you. My favorite memory is that sense of having a discussion with a student and suddenly going, that is a cool way of thinking about it that I wouldn't have thought about it because I, I didn't come from where you came from. I'm, I grew up in a different era and you've seen it in a different way and that is so cool and that's helped me learn. So that's the goal for all of us in this course, the TAs, myself and you, is to see things differently because we're talking about it with someone else who's also an engineer. Tell us why you're passionate about teaching. I'm passionate about teaching because I'm passionate about learning. And I've got 285 or so students in my class who, who come from somewhere different than I do. And yeah, I've been at this longer than they have, but they're really, really bright. They see things differently. They express things differently. And so what I love, why I'm passionate about teaching is because I get to learn too. And together we create something that's never existed before, new understandings of what design is, new projects, new everything. And that's not gonna happen in, in, in if I'm just sitting there at my computer all day, coding things up or designing new mechatronic systems. So the, the passion for teaching comes from the passion for learning and from having a really amazing set of students to work with. What should students expect in your course? Uh, you should expect to have to put things together a lot. 
So my job is to lay out a set of ideas and a set of concepts and some foundational models that you can apply. But I can't apply them for you. So what we do in, in lecture and what we do in studio and what you do in your assignments is you take these core ideas, the core terminology, the core models, and you say, okay, what if I applied it to what I should eat for dinner tonight? What if I applied it to this code I'm working on in CSC 180? What if I applied it to my SIV 102 bridge? So what you should expect in the course is to be given some general principles that you then go out and apply. The other thing you should expect is to build on the principles that we start with. So we may share with you a couple of models of design that we really think are solid and can really support you, but you might go online, in fact we expect you to go online, or talk to an upper year or talk to a practicing engineer and find a model that we didn't know about. And then you can come back to us and say, you taught us this, what about this? What's the benefits? What's the weaknesses? And it's great for both parties learning from each other. So, so the thing to expect is, is not a set of instructions on what to do and not a, a set of things that you have to tell us back. It's a set of core ideas that you get to build and play with. Uh, what concepts in your course do people tend to struggle with the most? So acknowledging just the whole idea that, that the course is about building and growing and connecting. The concept that students do seem to struggle with, there's, there's really two. One is the notion of a really solid argument and how you put one together. Now, what, what students tell us, and, and I haven't been in high school for more than your age, is that in high school, the, the teachers would tend to believe them. Our job is to disbelieve you. And so you've got to convince us using, using logic, using evidence, using research, in a way that actually ties together that the arguments you're making as to why Subway was the right choice for dinner tonight and why you really should have laser cut your name tag as opposed to making it out of plastic. Those arguments are critical and a lot of students struggle because they're used to just being believed. And that sense of, why won't, why won't they just believe me, this is obvious? I think that's uh, something that students struggle with. The other thing that students sometimes tend to struggle with is balancing trying to be very, very rigorous and very, very uh, structured and quantitative with using judgment. The other one is sort of use judgment all the time and say, look, this is the right design because I believe it's the right design. Or they want to be very analytical and say, this design weighs 30 grams and, and has a volume of 43 cubic millimeters and has an R value of 12, therefore it's the best design. And getting that balance between the science and the technology and the math and the judgment and the trial and error and the experience is, is a real challenge. Uh, favorite thing about, about Praxis in the course? Um, Praxis doesn't start out by saying, in, in this lecture we're going to talk about this and, and give you an entire term's worth of material up front. And that's because we follow where you go. So you'll find that some lecturers will actually spend a good amount of time talking about what happened in that week's studio because a few students, or hopefully the whole class, had different observations. We want to say, to say how can we tie that back in? So what, what, I, I, what's, what I love about this course is we're adaptive to you. Now it's a ton of work because we're expecting to go one way and the students go the other way and we suddenly have to shift. But it's worth it because it means we're meeting you where you are rather than saying you have to be here. And so it's that, that each party, you, us, the TAs, adapting to each other and, and tailoring it to suit, suit interests, suit needs. And that's the one thing I do want to mention is that this is a course where you have the choice to take what you're interested in. And we've had students who are really interested in knitting, who are interested in doing app development, who are interested in robotics, and they can take the, the core ideas of Praxis and apply them in something that they're interested in, not something that we're interested in. Well, what do you enjoy discussing with curious students? Uh, your own experience is a big one. I'm, I'm a little older than you. I grew up in a different era. I watch different movies, and that's an in-joke, but you'll get probably in about six months. I enjoy students who want to, to bring themselves to the material so that I can see new ways of understanding it, too. So what I also care about is, is what you're interested in, because some of you are into video games, and if you look at the technology and the design behind video games, it's amazingly complex. Some of you are interested in knitting. Some of you are interested in race cars. Some of you are race car drivers. I kid you not, it's true. And just that sense of how your interests tie into design is the thing I most enjoy talking about. What were some ways or methods that you used, let me to help get you to where you are today? 
Uh, I would say there, there were two. The first was to learn how to find things interesting. Because there will be courses, there will be praxis topics, there will be assignment questions that you will just look at and go, I don't see this as being relevant, I don't see this as being valuable, it's not who I am. And that will drive down the motivation, that will drive down interest, that will drive down enjoyment. So one of the skills I developed early on was the ability to find things interesting. And if I couldn't do it myself, talk to the prof, talk to the TA, talk to the up ears, talk to anybody who sees it differently so that I can learn to see the same wonder in the material that the prof does. Because then you're going to be motivated, then you're going to learn. Another thing I, I did a lot was I would read ahead just a little bit because I can read faster than a prof can talk. I can read faster than I can write down. So if I've looked in the textbook, if there's a textbook, and, and just a, a word of warning, Praxis doesn't have a textbook, but we do make all of our slides available. So if you can take a quick scan through the slides, you're able to look at them and go, okay, I don't need to write that down. What I can write down is the stuff I didn't expect to hear, the stuff I didn't expect to see. Same thing in your context. If you've already read the part of the chapter that's being covered, you don't have to write down what your prof is saying except for the stuff that wasn't in the book. So it's a great way to be able to focus on the material and not on the recording. And the last thing I'll say is, I almost never got perfect on my assignments. But I also never really did badly, and that was because I would write down different approaches. I would, in a, in a question, write down two different solution paths if I wasn't sure. So at least the instructor knew I understood the material. I might not have got the right answer, but I had the steps and I knew what was going on. So three, three, three ways to get where I am today and, and so on. One, learn to find things interesting. Two, I've already forgotten, so don't forget things. Three was definitely read ahead, and we're gonna go from there. Any closing remarks, anything else you want to say to incoming first years? Well, I've met a number of you at our various events, and it's, it was, and, I've, and I'm on the admissions committee, so I, I've read your files. But you're more than your file, and you're more than your grades, and you're more than a five-minute conversation. You're, you're people. And what I want to say to you is, is be yourself. Don't forget that you, you come in with your own background and experience. And yes, you're now, you're now student engineers, but you're student engineers who can pursue your own path. And by joining Ensai, you have that flexibility. So engage with your, your classmates, your profs, your TAs, your upper years, students from inside, outside, inside, inside, outside of Ensai, and just say, how can I grow and how can I become something really cool, cooler than I am today?